Okay, you reckon this is five now. <laughs> James reckons this is uh, edit number five. <laughs> Synesthesia can uh, best be described as uh, a blending of the senses. Um, as individuals, we've all got five individual senses, and uh, under normal circumstances, those senses are dealt with individually. Um, we see something, we hear something, all dealt with individually. As a synesthete, what actually happens is somebody may hear something, and that immediately joins up with the, in my particular case, the, the taste sense. So therefore, whenever I hear something, I automatically get a taste in a particular place on, on an area of my tongue. Uh, my type of synesthesia is called lexical gustatory. It's a, a form of taste synesthesia in which um, I can, whenever I read words, whenever I hear the spoken word, whenever I write the spoken word, whenever I hear an ambient sound, uh, whenever I see a colour, I get an automatic and involuntary taste on my tongue. And some of these are quite strong and very distracting. Um, it makes reading quite problematical because I have to read and I'm, I'm tasting all the words as they're appearing. The, the, most, uh, the, the most popular theory as to how this happens is that uh, we're all born with synesthesia, if you like, as a child. We've all got joint senses. As the brain develops, what actually happens is we've got a gene, a pruning gene, that comes in and it just cuts those unnecessary senses. Usually this occurs and finishes, the process finishes when the child, the infant, is aged around about four, four and a half. That's when the brain is virtually fully developed. Um, and at that point, that is when our senses are, are totally separate. In the case of a synesthete, there's obviously a genetic flaw there because it doesn't, that pruning gene doesn't work and some of these connections remain. In my particular case, the taste area of my brain, which is quite deep inside my head, is connected to the sound area which is up here, quite near the surface. There's a big line of neurons that travel to and fro whenever I hear a sound or see a written word. I first realised that I had synesthesia, or I first noticed it, shall I say, as a, as a child aged four and a half. And I can date it pretty specifically because I can remember the circumstance and I went with perfect clarity. Um, I used to go to a school and we used to have to, every morning assembly, we had to recite the Lord's Prayer. And I can remember from the day that started, picking up a very, very strong taste of bacon, predominantly. And most of my synesthetic tastes, not all of them, but certainly most of them, are childhood flavours, childhood tastes, old sweets, um, mashed potato, mashed up carrot, banana custard things like that, the um, foods I had as a child. Mm. Well, I'm just, just going on a, on a journey around uh, Cape Town here and <laughs> got some lovely, lovely tasting names. You've got Century City, that one's uh, particularly flavoursome. That says carries a taste of, it. a bit like, the, you know, the mince pies you get at Christmas mixed in with peppermint. There's been vast inroads made into getting blind people to uh, to see via sound. Uh, they can uh, they, they've identified the areas of the brain that uh, they do need to stimulate to get people to recognise distance without actually seeing. So, it, been all sorts of incredible breakthroughs, and it's all because of, of synesthesia. When they first started mapping those uh, those neurological links. Oh, and I've just discovered an area that um, I'd be guaranteed to get lost in. Uh, we've got Chapel Street, which is, uh, carries a very strong and distracting taste of chips, but vinegary chips. And we've got Roger Street, which again is it's the insides of a meat pie, processed meat. Reminds me of uh, something that we used to call a scotch pie. And off that we've got Shepherd Street, which is uh, mince and potatoes, which I think the semantic link there would be uh, shepherd's pie, not too sure, but that's what it tastes like. With my synesthesia, um, it actually occurs over and above everything else. It's uh, the first port of call, if you like, for anything I see or hear. Um, for example, I can walk into a room and I'll get a, I'll experience a taste, a strong taste of 
strawberries, for example, or I don't know, bread and butter, something like that, and it won't immediately become clear where it's coming from. But as I look around, I will be able to eventually identify the source. Um, I had this confirmed by, I was tested at Edinburgh University, uh, whereby they showed me, I think it was about 120, 130 different pictures of objects that you think you, you know the name of, but you're not quite sure. Tip of the tongue stuff it's called. And um, I'll give an example there. They showed me a picture of a creature that uh, looked like a, a dolphin with a big spike on the end of its nose. I have seen one before. I'm pretty sure I knew what it was called, but I couldn't think of it there and then. So um, I went to the synesthetic flavour because as I'm looking at it, I'm getting a taste for it. I gave them that flavour instead. Come the end of the test, we went back to it, identified it as a narwhal. Hey, press day. The, 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 the synesthetic taste I get for the word narwhal was the exact same taste that I uh, experienced when I looked at it and couldn't identify it as a narwhal. And that happens all the time. If you look at my car, I mean that my car's the blue one. That blue car is my most, is is the favourite colour. It's very comforting that blue to me. It always has been. This house used to be covered in that colour until my girlfriend threw a wobbly. Everything used to be dark blue. Um, inside's dark blue. Everything's dark blue. The carpets are dark blue. It's just dark blue all over. I hate headlights because headlights give me a taste of marmite whenever I see them. And that's an example of how I have to zone in on something and only feel comfortable with something like that. I mean, that car I came in today, I hate driving that because it, it's sort of a tangy, gives me a tangy feeling all the time. I mean, there's obviously all sorts of other effects such as, uh, I mean, like eating out in restaurants is a nightmare, to be honest, a lot of the time, simply because... Um, as with other people, I assume you look at a you look at a menu, you see the words there, you get a taste for for what you're looking at. Uh, in my particular case, the tastes I get, in most cases, don't match up with the taste of the food. It's a bit like looking at pie and chips and tasting ice cream. I suppose it's it, it just doesn't sit well with me, um, and I find it quite difficult. But ever since I was was a child, I've always really enjoyed and felt comfortable. Um, reading while I was eating. Um, I used to do it as a child under the covers with salad cream sandwiches when I was uh, very, very young. I've always thought there's got to be some connection there because nowadays uh, when I eat something in my own home environment, I do tend to try and ma manipulate the environment to suit what I'm eating. If you read a tabloid newspaper, you'll find the language in there so much more colourful with you. Reveals, all the rest of it. They use very, very colourful language in there, and I find that quite difficult to take in. Not to read, but I get lots and lots of tastes with it. So it's a good job that the text itself is usually pretty simple, because I'd have difficulties otherwise. Whereas in a, in a tabloid, in a, a broadsheet, the old broadsheet style anyway, the language in there is certainly a lot more moderated and it's easier to read as far as I'm concerned there are less tastes and flavours attached to it. Funnily enough one of the um, if I'm eating a sweet again I do this subconsciously as well as consciously if I'm eating something that's sweet uh, pudding for example I always like to be reading the sports section because I don't know what it is about sports the language they use in reporting sports but it's very very fruity and sweet because one of the one of the things I don't like is um, is having something that doesn't taste like it is. I'll give you an example here that they have actually tested me on this. If you give me a horrible, slimy, disgusting, revolting oyster, which are disgusting things, they've got very little taste as far as I'm aware. Because um, when I eat one of those, my synesthesia converts it into a chocolate taste. It's not many foods that are like that, but there are some some foods that just don't taste as they are. Recently um, I worked on a, on a project that concentrated on trying to explain and, and put across my own personal perceptions of my environment around me. I suppose expressing the synesthetic experience to a non-synesthete, uh, what it was, it was uh, taking groups of people around and showing them and explaining to me exactly what it was like to be a taste synesthete. Uh, we went on a journey, we went uh, on a journey through London, which is a city I know very well, and um, I was brought up there. 
Uh, I mean, to give you an example, the, um, there was a, an image of bank. Uh, there was the Bank of England. And uh, that, to me, gives me a very strong taste of, best described as a minstrel sweet. But a, he said it's a chocolate sweet with a hard shell. Uh, that was bank. Although there was an additional red bus in there, I remember, which uh, added some strawberry jam, which was a nice touch because it's uh, two flavours complemented each other. And um, there was also uh, there was an image of the shard there, which was quite good. The shard is gives me a lovely taste. It's a, a nice cream soda kind of flavour. Um, I can remember there was King's Cross as well, King's Cross Station. That um, gives me a taste of a bit like very rich fruitcake. And, and another image there was uh, was the gherkin in London, which uh, that was a really weird that one flavour. That one it was sort of like um, some sort of weird marzipan kind of taste. But anyway, it was uh, it was a, a fantastic and effective way of uh, portraying what it's like for me. Uh, for example, there was a pervading smell of um, rhubarb. I remember, um, and rhubarb's the, the the taste I get whenever I travel on the underground tube system. I get it all the time. It's got to be something to do with the uh, the noise and the hum of the motors. But it's uh, a really nice taste. This was a very effective way of getting it, getting it across because it was uh, it was an interactive, synesthetic experience. As far as I was concerned, it was perfectly normal for me. Um, but it was interesting to watch other people's reactions to it. Then we come on to uh, Nelson Mandela Boulevard, which is uh, very tasty. That it's um, mm, trouble with the Nelson bit. The, the Mandela's uh, rubber, so it's um, it's a bit like uh, a bit like a rubber band. And Nelson tastes of Christ. I don't know what that is. That's going to annoy me now to death. I hate that. Nelson. I oh, was showing that, I can't get that. I didn't think of Nelson Mandela. That's a lo lovely rubber taste out there. That's, um, it's, it's, it's like, it's exactly like a rubber band. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Nelson. No, I can't get that. That is going to annoy me now, that for months. <laughs> 